Ether. The ether. 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 Welcome back. Why do you think you live on a spinning ball? Well, that's an easy one. And I'll explain it to you if you like. And don't worry, I'll use really small words to make sure you understand. Uh, I wish common sense was more common. Go nuts on my nuts. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Playing a Blinder with me, the Creepy Blinder. I don't know what happened there, but we're here now, so let's just get on with it. Tidy! This is the Flat Earth model. Just looks like a big pair of boobs to me, but what do I know? And you'll have to excuse me, I feel it's only fair to pre-warn you before we get any further into the video. Now this is Lindsay Harris. And I think I may be allergic to Lindsay's stupidity because it causes me to break out in sarcasm. <laughs> it has a center earth vortex. A what now? It has a center earth vortex. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. So allow me to explain. Now, Lindsay has this theory, <laughs> theory, that the North Pole is in the center of the flat earth and that there is a central vortex that encapsulates the sun and the moon and causes the sun and the moon to spin and the face of the sun, depending on which way it's pointing, gives night or day to that particular area of the flat earth. I know. This is, this is, this is a slice through the flat earth. Slice through the middle. It's the center north. Out of centre north, everything is projected out into our realm. All these are holographic images, projections from in here. Oh yeah, and of course space is fake and the stars and everything we see in the night sky are just projections coming out of this magical centre vortex onto the dome. Like an electron microscope, the sun is in here with the electrons. It's a vortex, it's spinning, it's created the energy, and it's all blown up out here for us to see. No, it's not often that I am lost for words, but sometimes, just sometimes, even I can only sit back and say, wow. Nothing in the whole realm is physical. We think we're physical because we have five senses programmed into our brain. Wait, so we aren't real either? And who programmed our brains? You're gonna say God, don't you? <laughs> you do realize, Lindsay, that denying the truth doesn't change the facts, don't you? But if you understand everything as light and frequencies, you'll understand why you think you live on a ball. Because what's coming out of here hits, hits the medium, the medium bubbles, whether they're full of just air or water, minute. What happens at the equator? More humidity. They're denser. So whatever's been projected out of here hits the equator and gets reduced. The frequencies get reduced. Nah. The light dulls. The sun, like when the sun is in perihelion. Now I don't mind admitting I'm really struggling to follow along with what Lindsay's saying, but that generally tends to happen when somebody's just making things up. But what I think he's trying to imply is that the tropics, which seem to be a tube in his flat earth model, act like sunglasses for everything that's beyond the tropics? And how can the sun be in perihelion? Because perihelion is the point in a planet's orbit w at which it's closest to the sun. So how can the sun be close to the sun? Now, if you do want to go and check out more of Lindsay's videos, I will include the link in the video description because I'm getting really good at remembering to do it these days. But I feel it's only fair to warn you that you will be doing so at your own risk. Now, Lindsay is the self-proclaimed expert on this particular model of the Flat Earth. And that's generally because it's exclusively his model. So it's easy to be an expert about something that you've made up yourself. Smart people learn from everyone and everything. Average people learn from their own experiences. But stupid people, like Lindsay, they already have all the answers. Shines out here. It's not melting the ice because it's been reduced. 
the medium of the tropics has reduced its energy. Well, I hate to say it, but that was actually a pretty smart move by Lindsay. What he's done is he's preemptively built in an explanation as to why his central vortex sun doesn't melt the ice wall. You'll still see it here though, don't you? But it's reduced the energy. When it's the sun's facing this way, um, Oh dear, have I spoken too soon? Has Lindsay just come to the realization that when his central vortex sun is facing in the opposite direction, there is no tropics there to filter the sun's energy and prevent the ice wall from melting on that side of the flat earth? Ooh, well this is ever so slightly awkward, isn't it? And I actually feel a little bit sorry for him, but I shouldn't really be surprised because after all, we all know that the definition of stupid is knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believe in the lie. Isn't that right, Lindsay? What's that called? That's perihelion, that one's epihelion, epihelion. It's facing up. You can't face down, it'll melt the ice. Nice save, Lindsay. Let's just make the sun directional and tilt it upwards like a lampshade. That'll solve the problem of melting the ice on that side of the flat earth, won't it? Should I tell him, or do you want to do it, that you can only have perihelion and aphelion if there's an elliptical orbit, which according to flat earthers, there isn't. Especially flat earthers like Lindsay who claim faces space. <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? Especially flat earthers like Lindsay who claim that space is fake. So it's all being reduced. So this is why we can't have a flat earth map. Nope, you can't have a flat earth map because the earth isn't flat. It really is that simple. And it doesn't matter what fantastical theories and stories you come up with to try and make the earth flat. The simple fact is, it never will be. Now, I've had some comments in recent videos, people asking me, you know, why aren't I more of a people person? Why do I pick on all these flat earthers? Well, it's not that I'm not a people person, because I am. I'm just not a stupid people person. Because everything gets reduced. And this is what happens. It gets reduced and we think we all go back to the bottom of a ball. Because all the energy has been reduced down. You get that? I do not get it, Lindsay. And judging by your reaction and vacant stare, neither do you. Let's try and explain it better. <clears throat> Lindsay Harris, everybody, proving that smart as the plans and stupid as the stories. You just gotta understand it's it's a Oh. <laughs> so I thought he was finished. <laughs> Carry on. It's a realm of energy. It's not physical. Because the, the flat earth map came out in the late not eight, 80, 90s. Einstein got his hands on it, he starts tr trying to figure things out, so they're trying to make it all work. So they've all known, they've known this system for a hundred years or more, but they don't tell you. They just put it in the system so that maybe common man can figure, understand it, but he can't. Now to my mind, Lindsay has just nailed the main reason why a lot of people become flat earthers. Because they can't understand the physics of the real world, they try to come up with their own version of reality, which leads them to believing that the Earth is flat. Because in their mind, that's easier to comprehend and explain, rather than trying to wrap their heads around the physics and the, you know what actually causes us to be what we are. So they're just, I don't know what they're trying to do. Well, in fairness, Lindsay, it doesn't seem like you know what you're trying to do either, so I don't really see what your point is. It just, it's just, nothing makes sense. It's quite easy to know that all this, the whole night sky is flowing. You know, that the Polaris rotation's there from down and there, that's easy to explain. This one out here is reflected off here. They can't explain that, probably because they couldn't. That's why, they didn't know it, I don't know. But that's 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 reflection here. That's different to that, isn't it? Because it's, it's coming up coming off here. That one's going up there. So that's why the stars appear to rotate in different directions based on which hemisphere you're in. It's because one is a reflection of a giant central vortex mirror. Well, I never. <laughs> See what I'm saying? 
oversimplifying things that you don't understand, Lindsay, and getting it really, really wrong, and making yourself look like a moron in the process. <laughs> Keep it up. So once you understand the medium, we have a medium, an, e an ether, the ether. That's the ether. Ether, the ether, ether, ether. Do you mean ether as in the physics concept that was made obsolete in 1905 after the discovery of Einstein's theory of special relativity? Or are we talking about a different ether? Hmm? It explains it all. Well, of course it does. What better to explain something that isn't real than something that does not exist? Because it hits the moisture. We understand the magnetic fields, where they're going from the moisture to the moisture, down through the, back to the moisture. To the moisture. Now I didn't mind when he was repeatedly saying ether, but I draw the line at that many consecutive uses of the word moisture. There's just something about the word moist and moisture that really bothers me. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications if you're new. I'm the Creepy Blinder and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody, bye bye. Alright, alright, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe by order of the creaky blinder.